Gather round everyone. We are going to have a conversation about each agent's backstories on how we formed the ISA squad. Isn't that marvelous? In fact, should I say, bloody marvelous? Um 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 um. Okay. Sure, that sounds great. Attention all ISA agents. Please report to the conference room at once. So what's going on, Lieutenant? We are going to interview each other on how we became who we are, how we formed the ISA squad, and why we are here today. I'll start. I was born in 1969 in California. As a little girl, I was always drawn to adventure and danger. I loved watching spy movies and dreaming of one day becoming a secret agent myself. And when I joined the ISA squad, I knew I was one step closer to my dream. But being a spy wasn't easy. It took a lot of hard work and dedication to become as proficient as Lieutenant Hudson. I spent countless hours training in combat and learning different languages for my undercover missions. And let me tell you, I was a master of disguise. I could blend into any environment and gather information without anyone suspecting a thing. Over the years, I have been on some of the most dangerous missions. I have been all over the world, from the busy streets of Tokyo to the deserts of the Middle East. And I always come back victorious, thanks to my quick reflexes and my ability to think on my feet. But being a spy also meant keeping secrets, even from my family. My husband and two children have no idea about my real job. They thought I am just a businesswoman, always traveling for work. And even though it was hard for me to keep such a big part of my life a secret, I knew it was necessary to keep my family safe. Now, at almost 55 years old, I am a legend among the ISA squad. And even though I had been in the field for so long, I still have the same passion and drive for my job as I did when I first started. Awesome. Now it's mine and Selma's turn. As you guys might know, we are the infamous twins from Springfield, we're always known for our sharp tongues and quick wit. Growing up in a small town, we have learned to navigate through all sorts of characters, from the eccentric to the downright bizarre. As we entered our late 50s or early 60s, we have found ourselves at a crossroads. We have always been a team, relying on each other for support and guidance. But with our father gone and no significant relationships, we have felt a sense of restlessness. That's when you guys, the ISA came knocking on our door. The intelligent secret agency was in need of skilled agents, and our unique abilities fit the bill perfectly. With our sharp eyes and keen observation skills, we are able to gather intel on targets without being noticed. And our background in dealing with all sorts of characters in Springfield made us invaluable in undercover operations. Despite our age, the Bouvier twins show no signs of slowing down. We had found our true calling in the world of espionage, and our bond as sisters have only grown stronger as we embark on daring missions together. Who knew that two middle-aged women from a small town could become such crucial members of a prestigious agency? Okay, that's good. Now it's mine and Carter's turn. I was born on May 19th, and Carter's was on March 11th, and lived in Mount Abraham. New York, and attended Mount Abraham High School. I am very sassy and snobbish, but sometimes whimsical, and fun-loving. I have a loving relationship with Carter, who I accompanied on our school's annual field trip to Paris. Ever since we were kids, we both loved martial arts and acrobatics, and even today, we are very proficient in it. Me and Carter were walking inside the airport. Carter threw out his bag to a guy named Billy and we laughed. Inside the airport, we sat and kissed. Later, our teacher, Larry Murnau told the students said something in French, and Carter asked me, what the fuck does he want? After this guy named Alex had a premonition that plane will explode, a fight started between him and Carter. The co-pilot kicks off the people who were on the corridor and I followed Carter off minutes before the flight explodes just as Alex predicted. Several minutes later, my parents came to the interrogation room and took me home. After the accident, we decided to move to Adelaide to start a new life. Okay, okay now it's my go. Yo what is up people my name is Jericho Fortune, JTR Gamer 222 Welcome to my channel. I am an actor slash voice actor slash singer slash animator slash athlete. 
I've been doing YouTube for 11 years now from plush tiber to animator slash voice actor. I also spend my time working out and lifting weights, which is one of my favorite activities. I do animations, including two SFM series like Baby the Ballerina's Life and the Baldi Basic series. And sometimes I do music video animation. Make sure to subscribe for more videos of mine and follow me on my other social medias. So yeah. Subscribe and I'll see you in some random videos I post. Are you joking right now? That is literally the description for your YouTube channel, Jericho, you little shit. Okay, here I go. I used to live in McKinley, Pennsylvania, with my younger sister Julie. And then we moved to Adelaide. I attended McKinley High School, and was the school's yearbook photographer. I was also dating Jason Wise and was the best friend of Carrie Dreyer. Me and my sister Julie are of Danish and Norwegian descent. I visited the carnival with my boyfriend Jason Wise, best friend Carrie Dreyer, and Carrie's boyfriend Kevin Fisher for our senior class field trip. When we boarded the Devil's Flight roller coaster I had a premonition that the roller coaster will crash, killing everyone on board. I panicked a fight broke out between Kevin and fellow students Louis Romero and Ian McKinley. As a result several students are forced off the ride moments before the roller coaster crashes as I predicted. The remaining passengers are killed, including Jason and Carrie, which left me devastated. I know how you feel Wendy, we all do, so let's just move on to the next one. Retrouville's resident boy genius knows a lot about science, but not so much about life. I think anything can be solved with a mathematical equation or a new invention. Built my own robot dog, Goddard, and uses my best friend Carl as a guinea pig for my experiments. Genius aside, Jimmy is your typical kid. I take my parents for granted until I need them, enjoy hanging out with my pals Carl and Sheen, and is in constant competition, or is it infatuation? With Cindy Vortex, the smartest girl in Retrouville. Oh, and not counting my gravity-defying hairdo, I'm the shortest kid in class, and has to be in bed by 9. Awesome Jimmy, now it's Gibson's time to shine. I'm gonna talk about my life and my journey on YouTube. So. I was born on March 24, 2007 in Denver, Colorado, but now I live in Adelaide, Australia. I'm 16 years old and I love to make videos for you guys. My real name is Gibson Batty, but you probably know me as Polyboy113 on YouTube. I have the best parents in the world, Catherine and Andrew, and a little brother named Quinn. We all live in Adelaide and it's pretty cool here. I haven't talked much about my education yet, but I'm a smart kid. Don't worry. So, let's get to the juicy stuff, my YouTube career. I started my channel, Polyboy113, in 2021, and now I have over 400 subscribers. My first video was about this game called Sandy's Basics and it was okay, but then I switched it up and started making annoying kid videos. Those are my favorite to make because I love to entertain you guys. I've made over 120 videos, and each one has at least 100 views. It's crazy to think that so many people watch my videos and I'm just a normal 16 year old boy. Okay. Thank you guys so much for listening. Now it's Rosalita's shot. Come on babe. I am the goth girl with a beautiful soul and a voice of an angel. Was born on November 2nd, 2006 in Spain. I am a quiet and kind person, but deep down I've had big dreams of becoming a famous singer and actress. I attended Barcelona High School where I stood out with my Day of the Dead makeup, skirts, and silver necklace. But my life wasn't always rainbows and unicorns. My biological mother passed away during childbirth, and my father remarried. I was close to my father, and we would often go fishing and stay at our cabin in the woods. But one day, everything changed. My father was brutally murdered at a 7-Eleven store, and my stepmother married another man. After my father's death, my new parents neglected me, and I felt like I didn't belong. So, at the age of 17, I packed my bags and moved to Adelaide, South Australia. I wanted to start a new life and chase my dreams. It was in Adelaide where I met Gibson Batty, a 16-year-old boy, at a local bar. We were both drawn to each other's unique personalities, and soon we became lovers. Gibson was fascinated by my gothic style and my passion for music and acting. Together, we would explore the city and attend concerts and plays. 
My dreams of becoming a famous singer and actress seemed more achievable with Gibson by my side. He is my biggest supporter and believes in my talent. Despite our slight age difference, mine and Gibson's love for each other is genuine and pure. We prove that age is just a number and that true love knows no boundaries. My journey to finding love and chasing my dreams may have been unconventional, but it led me to my soulmate. So, last but not least, we have James. So James, what do you have to tell us? Any interesting big stories? Um 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 um, no. Are you sure?